Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Just give me a holler whenever, brother. I'll, uh, I'll get this going. Okay, so we're going to... We're going to stay in the honey again today. Uh, pray it'll be a blessing to you. And you're live. We're live. Amen. All right. So, yeah, we're going to... You, you might recall part two. So this is part three, right? Uh, part three. So part two, how we ended. And I'm going to do a quick review just in case any of uh, our onliners, anyone watching online didn't catch parts one or two, but I'm going to do like super quick. I'm not going to spend like 15 minutes on it like I did last time. Um, so before I get started, if you want uh, like to hear about the references or anything like that, you're just going to have to go find parts one or two. I think you can search it in YouTube for part two. For part one, someone posted it in one of the comments, the link to part one. But we're going to fly through this first part, the first review, just because I just want to give mostly, you know, I'm mostly concerned with the people in this room, give you a little refresher. But okay, Jeremiah 11, turn over to Jeremiah 11. And mm -hmm. in parts one and two, we'll quickly review. Parts one, part one, we went through the makeup of honey. So this is a word study on honey. We went through the makeup of honey, that is to say what it is. What, what is honey? We saw in the first mention, which is Genesis 43, 11, that honey is among the best substances found in Scripture. We found, we found that honey is likened to gold and fine gold. It's second only to the words of God. It is pleasant words. So that's where we ended up, you know, we kind of unpacked it, but it ends up being the words of God. Honey is likened to the words of God. Uh, God's meat the corn of heaven, angels' food, it's bittersweet. You know, so as we go through this, kind of have this double thing going on in your mind. Honey, words of God at the same time. Honey, words of God. It's bittersweet. You know, it's loathed by the full soul, but it, uh, it's sweet to the hungry. It's loved. It's enlightening. It's treasured. It's the glory of all lands. We saw the mockery of honey, what it is not. And I referred to that as uh, Satan's corn syrup. So uh, it's near identical. So when you think about Satan's corn syrup, think of the modern perversions, the counterfeit version of the words of God. It's near identical. It's sweet bitter. So it tastes sweet, but it has a bitter end to it. It leads to death and hell, doubt, ignorance, wickedness. It is turned meat. It is the gall of asps. Remember, it even has that yellowish, goldish kind of color to it, but it's not honey, my friend. It's poison. And we saw that uh, Satan is not concerned with honey. He's more concerned with money. So the riches that he swallows down, he's going to end up vomiting back up, praise the Lord. We saw the mirage of honey where you won't find it, where you will not find honey. You won't find the words of God. You won't find honey in a cursed cruise of compromise. You won't find it in man's glory. You won't find the words of God, the sweet honey, in a bitter, unbelieving heart or a proud intellectual mind. Mm -hmm. Part two, we looked at the map of honey, where it can be found, where you can find the honey. And praise God, we know we can find it. <laughs> There's somewhere on planet Earth where you can find the perfect words of God. You can find it in a land flowing with milk and honey. You can find it in the wilderness. It's from heaven. It's found in an exceeding good land. A land with uh, hills and valleys. A land that drinks the rain of heaven, heaven. A land which God cares for and his eyes are always upon it. The King James Bible. Amen. Uh, we found that honey is flowing from the rock carcass of a lion, the ground, the brooks, the garden of the bridegroom, the honeycomb, the tongue, ears, heart, bowels, bones, and the soul. Amen. So you need the honey everywhere and it can be found everywhere. Amen. Um, and then lastly, we looked at the means of honey, uh, how to get it. How, how do I get the honey? 
And we found that you get the honey by coming to it, coming to where the honey is, the Bible. Come to it. You search through the Bible. You find the honey. You taste it. You trust. You, you suck it out of the rock. You open wide and let God pour it down. You take it. You eat it. You hear it. Receive it. You go to it. You speak it. You refuse evil. You choose good. And you stay in the land. Amen? All right, so we, again, if you want to, we go in depth in part one and two, and there's a lot of great stuff in there, praise the Lord. But for anyone who hasn't uh, seen any of the series, it's pretty great stuff. You can go check it out, but we're going to get going with part three now. So part three, Jeremiah 11, and what the first thing I want to look at for Jeremiah 11, so we saw how to get it before, right? We, we ended with that, how you can get the honey. Um, I want to start with today how to not get the honey. So I want to look at the mess of honey. You know how to get it, but it's going to start with kind of bad news today. You're going to, we're going to look at how you can be sure you're not going to get anything sweet. You're not going to get any honey. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 11, look with me in verse 3. The Bible says, And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. And look in verse 5. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. As it is this day, then answered I and said, So be it, O Lord. Look at verse 8. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. So if you want to be sure how not to get the honey, uh, it's by disobedience and inaction. Disobedience to the words of God and inaction. So, I mean, this could even apply to, you know, maybe you're reading your Bible every day. But are you obeying the words that you read? Are you acting on the words that you read? All right. Go over to Jeremiah 32. Let's look at Jeremiah 32. Yeah, not going to be real pleasant words when you're not doing them. Amen? Yeah. I mean, you can have all the lip service you want, but uh, Jeremiah 32, and let's look at verse 22. And hast given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, praise the Lord. Here's some honey. And they came in and possessed it. Oh, praise the Lord. They came and they got some honey. But they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. So we see there, hey, praise the Lord, you came and you got some honey. You know, that's one of the ways to get it. But then you obeyed not you didn't walk in the law, and you did nothing. So that's another way you can make a mess out of the honey that God's trying to give you. So disobedience, uh, neither walked in thy law, and you did nothing. We'll leave that as an action. And for three, we'll just did uh, no walk. No walk. You didn't walk in the things that God asked you to do, tried to show to you. He wants to walk and talk with you. Okay, uh, don't turn there, but Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 20, another way you can be sure you won't actually get the honey is by overeating. Verse 20, Deuteronomy 31, verse 20, says, For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat... Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them 
and provoke me and break my covenant. So over, remember we looked at that verse, you know, uh, you know, eat, you don't eat too much honey. You know, eat however much is suf- as sufficient for you. Overeating leads to vomiting, which means you're not actually absorbing and utilizing all of the honey that you're eating, but you're wasting it. Not only are you, someone else could have had that honey, man. Some, th- this, the honey's for everyone, but you're just like coming in and like, get out of the way, get out of the way, and you're just like gorging yourself on it so much that you puke. That's foolish. What a selfish thing to do. Also, vomiting leads to loathing the honeycomb. You lose your taste for it. I used to love uh, what is it? sour cream and onion, those chips, right? And one time I ate so many I threw up, I could never eat them again. I know, sad, right? Sad. Even sadder, people do that with the Bible, brother. Yeah. So don't think you're spiritual because you read 21 chapters, 777. You read 21 chapters a day, you know, because you're so spiritual. Uh, you should love coming to God's Word. You should love coming to the honey pot. You shouldn't just be forcing it down, you know, and then you, you loathe it, which ends with you becoming fat and turning to other gods serving them, provoking God, and breaking His covenant. So overeating is another way to make a mess out of the honey that God's given to you. Overeating. Isn't that like gluttony or something? Yeah. So you can even be gluttonous with a good thing. Interesting. Go over to Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Yeah, I didn't think I would get a lot of amens during this portion of the teaching. That's okay. Preaching at myself too. It's all right. Ezekiel chapter 20. Let me get over there. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, and we're going to look at verse 6. I hope you have your Bibles, even if you're online. You know, I know you're probably sitting around in your PJs, got your hot cocoa and dog on your lap. Bless God, that sounds kind of nice. But hopefully you have your Bible next to your dog on your lap, amen? And you're turning in the scriptures. Ezekiel chapter 20, let's look at verse 6. The Bible says, in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Look at verse 8. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, like the one-eyed monster in the living room. uh, Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. So another way you can make a mess out of the honey that God's trying to bless you with is you rebel against God, reject His word, Retain your idols and remain worldly. Amen? Nice and alliterated for you guys so you can remember it. Uh, So, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. We want the honey. Amen? I I hope you want the honey. I'm trying to give you some honey. So, uh, So the last way that you can make a mess out of the honey in your life is rebel against God. Reject what you're reading. Reject the words. Retain your idols. Just keep, basically, just keep doing what you want. Doesn't pastor always say that? Like, go ahead. Keep doing what you want and see how that goes for you. And remain worldly. All right. Now, let's look at the members of honey. So we're moving on. It's okay. It'll lighten up maybe a little bit for you. Maybe not, though. I don't know. All right. So... Next section here, we're going to look at the members of honey. Who, who gets the honey? You might notice, like, this is not some deep thing. I'm just doing, like, who, where, what, when, why, how, all that stuff. On a word, honey, and the Lord gave me a bunch of great stuff. Amen? So you could do this, too. Amen. All right, so who gets the honey and who doesn't? Go over to Numbers 14. This is pretty cool. Uh, Numbers chapter 14. I want the honey. Do you want the honey? 
Okay, so you want to be one of the people that can get the honey. Praise the Lord. Me too. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. And let's start in verse 9. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So you got Caleb and Joshua, right? When they go to spy everything out, it's basically them versus the murmurers, right? So in verse 9, they're telling them, only rebel not. Like, don't screw this up, guys. We got this. Just, just, just don't rebel, and it's going to be so great for us. And then what do they do? You know what they do. They fear man rather than God. Uh, look in verse 10. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. So their murmuring leads to murdering the men of God specifically. Look at verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because why? He had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. So the land that's flowing with milk and honey, you want a blessing? You want, the, you want a blessing out of, the, out of the Bible? You want to be a Caleb, amen? You want to be a Caleb who faithfully serves God. Why? Because he had another spirit. He didn't have the spirit of Antichrist like everyone else has nowadays in Laodicea. He had a believing spirit. Amen? So you want to be, uh, you want to be a member of the honey, the honey club? You want to be believing. You want to be a Caleb. Do you believe that there's a perfect word of God? Didn't get any amens right there. Wow, I thought I would get some amens here t tonight. Do you believe that there's a perfect word of God? Amen! Okay. All right. You guys have me nervous there. <laughs> Pastor, come quick. Uh, a lot of people don't. I know that in our church, um, that's something we just take for granted, right? But most Christians uh, don't. And I'm not getting down on, if you're watching this online and, you know, that's you, I'm not necessarily getting down on you. you. You don't know all the things that are going into this. Who's messing with the honey? But your pastor might. His, uh, his seminary professor might. Someone knows. Someone's got to be the murmurer. So who is it? Is it you? Are you going to point to someone? I'm not murmuring against the words of God. I believe them. No big deal to me. Okay, so you want to be a Caleb. You want to be believing. You don't want to be a murmurer. They don't get it. So Caleb, his shield of faith, that's what he was using, right? In spite of the fact that it's like, we're like grasshoppers in these guys' sides. He had a shield of faith that enabled him to be a follower of God and a possessor of the land flowing with milk and honey. I have, I'm possessing the land right here. It's an exceeding good land. We looked at this before. Amen? I have it. Not only me, but my seed. If you, uh, if, if you have a uh, family... And you raise that family up to believe in the words of God. I think uh, Jack Hiles' mother used to do that, where she would, like, every night she would be like, okay, Jackie, repeat after me. This is the Bible, the word of God. And you'd say, this is the Bible. And she'd have them say it, like, over and over. You ought to be brainwashing your kids with that. That's, that's a good type of brainwashing. Not where, uh, not where I, I saw now kids are, like, they're so uncomfortable seeing faces on, in magazines and stuff. They're coloring masks on people's faces because they're uncomfortable seeing a naked face, if you will. That's the bad kind of brainwashing. But you ought to raise your, your children up to believe in the words of God so that they can possess it after you. Look in verse 27. Uh, verse 26, And the Lord spake unto Moses and, and unto Aaron, saying, verse 27, 
How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. So God calls the man-fearing, murmuring, mixed multitude an evil congregation and says in verse 30, Doubtless ye shall not come into the land. So they don't, get to, they don't get to go in the land. Verse 32, But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. We saw before the honey can be found in the wilderness. And if you don't find the honey, you're going to drop dead in the wilderness. The, when things get tough, what happens? maybe some people in this room, you know, you had a, one of those modern versions before. And for a time, it you know, helped you out. It was nice and it was, tasted sweet and it helped you get through some stuff. But when times really got tough, it just, something about it, there was no power in it. It didn't, it didn't hold true. It just seemed like, uh, I mean, is this stuff really real? You know, did God, well, did it really start with Adam and Eve? Was it really Noah's flood and all the animals? And I mean, this stuff is chock full with doubt. And we looked at Satan's corn syrup before. That's what they're all about is instilling doubt. Okay, no one gets the honey but Caleb, Joshua, and their seed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So you want to get the honey, it's pretty simple. Believe God. Believe what he says. When he tells you there's a land flowing with milk and honey where you can find it, believe it. Amen. Stop fearing man. Stop fearing your professor. Stop fearing your parents. Stop fearing whoever it is that's talking you out of what God told you. Come on. All right, and now it gets a little scary. Look at verse 36. And the men which Moses sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. Greater damnation for the men that were supposed to search out the land and bring back the good news. Mm, that's good. But instead were slanderers of God and his promise. Preserving the honey. Yeah. They brought an evil report upon the promised land and they died by the plague, quote, before the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that man. means the Lord's watching you die yeah. in the wilderness. Your carcass falling right there. He doesn't stop. He doesn't, oh, hold on. Before you die, let me give you some honey. Oh, it was right over there. You were so close. No, God told you exactly where to find it, how to get it. He said, don't worry, about those, uh, don't worry about those intellectual giants that you see that have these great arguments. And they say, should that comma really be there? Should that verse really be there? Uh, that's, no, that's not the oldest and best. No, you got to go to Alexandria or you got to go to the Vatican. Yeah, come on. Oh, never mind that it was found in the Vatican. It's, yeah. no, no, just believe me, believe me. I grade your paper. I decide what happens for your future. I'm your authority. No, they died before the Lord. And I, uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention this verse. Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. For I tell, I'll, I'll even say it nice for you, okay? I understand maybe I'm getting down on you a little bit here. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Are you hearing me right now? If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So watch out for that slander. Watch out for thinking that you know better than God, that you, that you know better than men who knew a lot better than you. All right, so we have, uh, yeah, just believe, amen? Just believe. Once again, if you don't know about the Bible uh, issue, if, you, if maybe you're new to this whole thing, again, I'm not getting down on you, but there are some wolves in sheep's clothing that have deceived you and would love to steal the honey from you so you die in the wilderness. And I'm trying to give it to you. So don't shoot the messenger. Amen? Amen? Okay. All right. So now let's look at, go to Exodus 3. So who gets the honey, right? And who doesn't get it? Well, Caleb and Joshua, their seed, they get it. The murmurers don't get it. You know who else gets it? How about God's people? Amen? 
I'm one of God's people. Amen? Yeah. Are you guys God's people? Yeah, amen, amen, amen. It's good being God's people, man. I was the devil's people for a long time, but not anymore. Amen. But we're going to look at God's people versus Satan's people. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. That's actually the first mention of God saying my people oh, wow. in Scripture. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, which are in Egypt. Remember where that honey that they say is really good is? And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Uh, go over to 2 Kings. Let's go over to 2 Kings now. 2 Kings and look at uh, chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18. This is pretty cool right here. 2 Kings 18. And let's check out verse 32. The Bible says in verse 32, um, this is Rabshaki, Rabshaki speaking for the king of Assyria, right? In verse 32, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. Oh, it's a land like your own land. Praise God. So it's very similar. Okay. A land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. A land of oil, olive, and of honey. Hey, this land's just like yours and it has honey just like you. Why? That ye may live and not die. Hey, it'll keep you alive. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuadeth you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. The Lord can't deliver you the honey. I'm with the king of Assyria, man. We're going to take you. No, don't worry about it. We'll take you to the real land and there's some honey there too. Don't worry about it. We got you, okay? You want honey? We got honey. <laughs> Rabshakeh here lists six things in Assyria with honey being the sixth. Isn't that interesting? Wouldn't honey be like at the tip of your tongue? Like everyone, it's the glory of all lands. We looked at it before. Honey is like one of the most precious substances in the Bible. But you're putting like corn and wine as number one, bread, vineyards, oil, olive. Oh yeah, and we got honey. We got the, yeah, we got Bibles too. Pick a Bible, whatever you want. It's all good. Okay, so he lists six things right there, right? And uh, honey is the sixth. Well, in verse 34, I'm not going to go through it, but he also mentions six fallen lands. And this guy's got like six, six on the six, 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 six on the mind. Uh, verse 32, you saw a land like your own land. We saw before, you know, the, when we were looking at Satan's corn syrup, that it dropped as in honeycomb. It's sharp as in two-edged sword. Is that what the Bible says about itself? It's sharp as a two-edged sword? The, my, my honey, my Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you see the subtlety? My Bible's not like any. What did David say? There's, give me Goliath's sword. There's none like it. Amen? There's none like this sword. Amen? But isn't it funny? They're trying to say, because they won't just come right out and say our honey's like poisonous or they won't say all the mean things I'm saying. They'll say, your honey's great. I love your honey. I was raised on your honey. My mom used to give me a, a tablespoon of your honey every day, and it was so great, and I grew so much. But then one day came where I just kind of, it wasn't tasting right to me anymore. I wasn't getting anything out of it. So then I decided I needed to go get a sweeter honey, just a little, something a little easier to take down. It just went down a little easier, you know. I don't like giving the honey, it's got the pollen in it. It's got like the weird chunks in it my mom used to give me. I, I get the one where it's just smooth and it looks like a nice little teddy bear. And so I give that to my friends and they like the little teddy bear. So they take down that honey a lot easier. Um, that, that should not be your attitude toward the words of God. With all due respect. Okay, so Deuteronomy 8. Go over to Deuteronomy 8. I want to show you, because you know I love doing it. You know I love numbers. And I specifically love numbers that make them mad. Because they should be mad. Because this stuff does not work. By the way, oh man, I, I, can't, get, I can't get off on a whole thing. But I downloaded, I had to pay for them by the way. I downloaded the NIV and ESV for, some, for the next part of this that I'm doing. 
I didn't know this. So you maybe if you uh, Deuteronomy eight, if you guys have you know you had those Bibles before, this was news to me. Did you know they write the actual numbers? Like it doesn't say six hundred three score and six. It literally puts six six six. So you're mad at me for believing numbers mean something in the Bible, but I can do a key number search in your Bibles. I can't search 666 in my Bible. More, more of that to come later on. Just a little, that's just a little nugget. Your Bible actually has the numbers written out, but you're, okay, you're mad at me for liking numbers. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8. At least say that, at least like say that that makes your Bible better. Like just own it. Be like, yeah, our Bible has actual numbers. You can do a key number search. It's way better. But you don't because you don't understand. Uh, I'm talking to the intellectual giants right now, by the way. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8. Let's see how God puts it. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive and honey. And you might say, well, Sean, they just... I mean, you were accusing them of making honey the last thing, but God does it right here too. He makes honey last. Yes, my friend, but look at how many things are mentioned. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and number seven. Ding, 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 ding. Winna, winna, jackpot. Seven, seven, seven. <laughs> honey, honey, honey. There's a gold nugget for you. Yeah, because... God's trying to tell you something. The evil guy that comes from Egypt and Assyria likes sixes. I like sevens. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, by the way, that's the 14th mention of honey in that verse. Just a little, just a little, just a little, little honey there for you. Just another little drop. 14 is seven plus seven, just in case you didn't. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'll get off that. Too many numbers. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So God's people, Satan's people, right? Satan's people don't get the honey. So the uh, Rabshaki does not get it. The murmurers don't get it. The Assyria, king of Assyria doesn't get it. But uh, God's people do. And in verse 1, what does it say? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do it. So the believers get the honey. Also the observers Observe what God is telling you to do and do it. Observers. Verse 2, it says, Thou shalt remember. The rememberers. Get some good honey. Are you memorizing scripture? Man, I got some honey on uh, Sunday when we had the brother get up and uh, quote 1 Corinthians 13, which talks about charity, not love. Charity, which is better than love. Amen? Amen. Love in action, not expecting anything back, amen? So the observers, the rememberers, and uh, verse 2 also says, Thou keep his commandments. The keepers get the honey. I know a group of people that take very seriously keeping God's word, keeping the honey. Almost like beekeepers. It's for, oh, wow, that's nice. Nice little devotional thing there for you, man. Amen? How about this in verse 3? And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Remember we looked at manna a little bit with the honey. Which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might take, uh, sorry, that he might make thee know what? That man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So if honey has to do with God's word, words come out of your mouth. So if someone's messing with what God said, they're messing with his mouth in essence. They're actually, actually, it goes deeper than that. They're messing with his heart because your words come from your heart. But uh, the honey, God's people are those who have been humbled in life. They had a hunger for the truth. Maybe you're tired of being lied to by some of the people I'm going at now. And they came to God, and what did he do? He fed them with the manna of his precious, holy, pure words. 
God wants us to know that we can and do live off of every word from his mouth. So uh, the members, who gets the honey? Uh, the, the believers, the Caleb's, the observers, rememberers, keepers, um, the humble. I'll put humble, little humblebees, amen? Humble, hungry, Okay, now, don't turn there. <laughs> but Proverbs chapter 22, verse 17, says, Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them, that's the words, within thee. They, the words, shall withal be fitted in thy lips, we got the ear, the heart, the lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day. I hope that this day someone, has, someone knows something uh, new about the word of God. Amen. Verse 20. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? Why? Verse 21 that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. We saw, uh, we saw before that it's not enough just for you to get the honey. You're supposed to take the honey out to another starving soul that needs some sustenance. And you're supposed to speak the honey to someone else as well. So... Um, there, we're supposed to be certain about this thing. We're not supposed to be doubting. We're not supposed to think, well, yeah, there's a word of God somewhere, but it was, you know, at some point in time, or the originals that no one's seen, and we can't actually verify, but those were uh, perfect, and that was the pure honey, but the pure honey's not here today. No, it's not here today. If we had the original honey, um, but that's not the case. That's Amen. not the truth. The those are not words of truth. Amen. Okay, so uh, moral of the story there, don't be Satan's people, be God's people, amen? amen. All right, let's close it with this. Uh, the machine of honey. The machine of honey. Wait, what am I at here? Wow, this thing's at eight. I'm almost getting to where I'm confused on how to do the Roman numerals. Okay. Okay, four. I had to make sure we were past four, right? Okay, go over to Proverbs chapter 30 if you don't believe me about this thing with uh, the words of God. Proverbs 30, about the fact that you need to know that what you're eating is pure. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, look at verse 5. The Bible says, Every word of God is pure. Remember, we live off of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Does it stand to reason that if God said it, it's pure? Every word of God is pure. How about verse 6? Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So there's another warning to you Bible correctors. Stop messing with what he said. Please, like I, 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 for your own safety, please stop messing with it. Or you will be reproved and found a liar. Amen. All right, I'm going to end it with this. I got the, it's so cool. I found this article. And I love finding articles that are like secular in nature, but they're biblical. They, but they don't know they're being biblical. You know what I mean? They're like biblical on accident. So the title of this article, it's from uh, schoolofbees.com. The title of this article is, Is Pure Honey Becoming Harder to Find? And uh, I'll, I'll just, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll go over some key points here. Over the last couple of years, the U.S. supply of natural honey has seen a steady decline. Over 76% of all honey sold in the U.S. is fake. That means seven out of ten times, you'll be taking home a jar of refined sugar instead of the real thing. Wake up. I'm trying to give you some healthy honey. You keep buying the fake honey. All right, um, I'm going to keep going down here. 
Uh, and it, oh, by the way, refined sugar is bad for you. I don't know if you knew that. That's deep, right? Wow, that's super deep. Uh, okay, case in point. Okay, so uh, at one point, see, it, it goes through like why all the fake honey? Uh, well, people make money off of it. Yeah. If I had to sum it up real quick for you. If it doesn't make sense, there's a buck in it. Amen? Okay, check this out. Importing honey from other countries means the market gets flooded with not so pure honey. Case in point, China, oh, China, again with the China, oh man, has flooded the honey market with, listen to this term, ultra filtered honey for years. The honey goes through a process that removes pollen. You know, the thing that kind of gets... Actually, why, remember why I started this whole thing was because I was having allergies. So I went to the farmer's market and I got honey that had like chunks in it. I'm like, what's this? They're like, the pollen actually helps you with your allergies. So they take that out. Okay, removes pollen, making it... Listen to this. Making it harder to pinpoint its point of origin. They take stuff out of it to make it harder to pinpoint the origin. Even more alarming, studies have shown that the Chinese also dumped tons of honey containing illegal antibiotics in the U.S. market for years. What does that mean? They've been adding junk to it for years and selling it to you like it's real honey. And you're buying it. And the Federal Drug Administration, drugs, why would drugs be food and drug? Okay, drugs, all right. And the Federal Drug Administration Agency only just started checking for, listen to this term. This is what it's called in this article. Adulterated and misbranded honey products recently. I wonder if, I didn't, I meant to, but I didn't. Uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up. I wonder if adultery is in the NIV or ESV. Mm. Just wonder. I, it could be. I'm not saying, but I, I know my Bible says something about uh, adultery. And this says that your products that you're putting out where you add to or take away from the pure honey is adulterated mm. and you're misbranding it. That's like, almost sounds like you're lying about it. Deuteronomy 4.2, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 12.32, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. All right. And it only gets worse for them here, but I'll... I'll Quick, I'm going to go very quickly through this, and then we'll, uh, we'll close it for the night. Thanks so much for your patience. Okay, this next section. What is the FDA doing about all the fake honey on the market? That's a good question, right? We got a bunch of fake honey. We got a crisis. What are we going to do about it? This article says, they can enforce rules on local food businesses if they tried to pass adulterated honey as real honey. Local food businesses... These people probably don't know what they're doing. They probably have great intentions. They're probably good, godly, spiritual leaders that are just doing their best. It looks like honey to them, tastes like honey, must be honey. Anyways, uh, the FDA, they can enforce rules on local food businesses if they tried to pass adulterated honey as real honey. If these businesses fail to label their denatured honey that means they're, they're, cha- they're, ta- they're removing the nature of the honey. You know, this word that's pure and holy and perfect and infallible. and They're taking away the nature of it. If these businesses fail to label their denatured uh, honey products as a, quote, blend of sugar and honey, the FDA can take action. You see how subtle that is there? Almost, you know, it, it's, it, drops as, it drops as a honeycomb. It's sharp as a two-edged sword. That's a sneaky little label they're doing so that they don't get checked out. So that they can skirt the system to make money. Galatians 5.9 says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. 
Matthew 16, 6, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Verse 12 says that that's their doctrine, is their leaven. Little change in doctrine here. Let's take this word out here. If you take the word no or not out of a sentence, do you think it's going to have a, make a difference? Uh, Mark 8, 15 talks about the leaven of Herod. Who, that Roman? We got some Roman stuff getting in here? Luke 12, 1 says that their leaven is hypocrisy. So the same guy that gets up in the pulpit and says, I got the pure honey of God, amen? You ask him behind the scenes, and he's going to be like, well, it's the, it's the best available that we have. But I mean, there's no such thing as a pure honey with just with no mistakes, with no impurities. That doesn't exist. Quote, the agency regularly checks honey imports for drug residues. What? Why would you put drugs in my honey? I'm just a nice hungry little soul trying to find some pure honey, trying to find the truth. And you're going to drug me? That's like some date rapist stuff, man roofing my uh, honey. It's supposed to be healthy, but you're actually making it poison me? The agency regularly checks honey imports for drug residues or undeclared added sweeteners. Isn't this fun? At least now you can tell the difference between real and adulterated honey by reading the label. If you opened it up and read what's on the label, you would see, whoa, hey, whoa, wait. This honey is different than this honey. Well, which one's better? The one with all the chunks in it? I have to chew on it. Does it get stuck to my teeth? Hard to swallow sometimes. Not as sweet as this one over here. This one's sweet. This one, I keep coming back till I vomit. All right. We'll close it here. At least now you can tell the difference between real and adulter- adulterated honey by reading the label. But that hasn't stopped the prevalence of denatured honey products in the market. The FDA won't detain adulterated honey imports as long as they're properly labeled. So as long as it's called a Bible, as long as it's got V on the end of it, right? As long as it's got the same looking you know, leather cover, you know, got the thin, maybe it's got gold edges. Ooh, nice. Gold edge. That looks like honey. Hmm. As long as it's properly labeled, no one will check you out. Just let it slide. You'd sell it. Just say it's a blend of sugar and honey. The suckers will buy it anyways. And with the cost of natural honey going through the roof, it's only a matter of time before fake honey takes over the market. Truth has fallen in the streets. So, is pure honey becoming harder to find? You can bet your bottom dollar it is. With 7 out of 10 households chomping down on denatured honey products, finding real honey in most stores is like finding a bee in a hornet nest. And we'll close it right there. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving me the pure honey. The honey that has everything I need in it. You've preserved it all these years. It hasn't spoiled. I can drink it. I can put it on me topically. I can, it, I can do anything with it, Lord God. It's keeping me alive in the wilderness of this life and all my brethren here. What I pray, Lord, is that any soul watching this who's not familiar with this information would not be offended by it so much that they just forget it, Lord. Have them read the label for themselves. Have them look into it themselves, Lord. Have them taste and see how good the real pure honey is compared to the fake stuff. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.